Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in strong support of H.R. 3299, the Protecting Consumers' Access to Credit Act of 2017, a most important goal of this chamber. H.R. 3299 is an important bill that is co-sponsored by a bipartisan group of members of the House. And Mr. Speaker, it was approved by the House Financial Services Committee with a very strong bipartisan vote of 42 to 17. I'd like to uh, start out thanking my colleague, the gentleman from North Carolina, McHenry, the vice chairman of the committee, for introducing this legislation and leading our congressional efforts to help create a regulatory framework which will encourage the growth of financial technology and expand much-needed access to credit for American small businesses and consumers. H.R. 3299 is a legislative response to the 2015 Second Circuit Court of Appeals decision in Madden v. Midland Funding, which clearly appears to have not, not considered the valid when made legal doctrine, which is a nearly 200-year-old principle of usury law in our republic. Again, Mr. Speaker, 200 years of settled common law upended in one court case. And that, in the decision, the court held that while the National Bank Act allowed a federally chartered bank to charge interest under the laws of its home state on loans it makes nationwide, non-banks that bought those loans could not continue to collect that interest because non-banks are generally subject to the limits of the borrower's state. The Second Circuit decision has caused considerable uncertainty and risk for many types of bank lending programs, including bank model marketplace lending, where national banks originate loans and then transfer them to non-bank third parties. Being able to offer consistent terms nationwide is vital to scaling the marketplace lending business which in turn allows lenders to access cheaper investment capital and then pass the savings on to the borrowers who may be looking to buy their first home, start a business, send a kid to college. H.R. 3299, again, is a common-sense bill that simply codifies the 200-year-old valid when made legal doctrine would preserve the lawful interest rate on a loan originated by a bank, even if the loan is sold, assigned, or transferred to a non-bank third party. This fundamental concept is the backbone of how fintech companies partner with banks. Without it, consumers are faced with higher cost and less availability of credit, particularly those consumers with less access to traditional lending sources. But, Mr. Speaker, don't take my word for it. According to a recent Columbia Stanford University study, borrowers with credit scores under 625 have seen their credit cut in half, cut in half thanks to this decision. Again, Mr. Speaker, borrowers with less than stellar credit scores have seen their credit cut in half in the territory comprising the Second Circuit. We simply cannot allow this to happen. Now, Mr. Speaker, thanks to President Trump and Congress passing the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, we are beginning to see this economy start to take off. We are finally seeing wages begin to grow after eight years of failed economic policy. But so much work remains to be done for working American families. And we have heard on our Financial Services Committee, speak, Mr. Speaker, from so many of these families who are trying to make ends meet, and it's just vital that they be able to access credit. Americans like Alan from New Hampshire, who recently had trouble finding credit through traditional banks and credit unions due to the regulatory load. As he explained, quote, but for my local dealer's efforts on my behalf, there's no doubt I would not be driving my current car. And this was a desperate situation as I am the sole income earner for my family. My wife is ill and we have two young children in school. After my old vehicle broke down, I needed to find reliable replacement transportation so I could get to work and continue to provide for my family. Mr. Speaker, we should not let the Second Circuit prevent Allen from getting that car loan he desperately needs in order to get to work as the sole provider for his family.
A small business owner from Utah named Maxine applied for a loan for her 37-year-old established business so she could update and purchase equipment uh, to support a contract that would have led to the creation of 50 additional jobs. And she explained, quote, three banks informed us that our rating according to new bank regulations imposed by Dodd-Frank disqualified us from loan consideration. Fifty jobs, poof, gone, Mr. Speaker. And so is not Dodd-Frank bad enough? Now we're going to add this Second Circuit opinion to deny credit, which for lower uh, credit score individuals has cut credit opportunity in half? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not up for the unelected to make such decisions. We cannot continue to allow, Mr. Speaker, Washington red tape and the Second Circuit to cut off credit opportunities for hardworking Americans. As the bill says, we must preserve and protect consumers' access to credit. So I urge every member to support this very important bipartisan bill. 